No matter what kind of business you have or work you do, if you want it to flourish, not just on a financial level, but on a spiritual level as well, it's important to create a sacred relationship with the soul of your work. I'm Brianna Borton, and I help people awaken to their highest selves. Click the link below to subscribe and hit that bell to get alerted when I make a new video every Monday. I started my first business, The Dragon Tree, with a spa location in 2003, and as I've loved and grown it to a multi-million dollar company, there are so many things I've learned. And one of them is the importance of being in relationship with the energy of my work. And this continues to be vital as I've started and grown many other companies. So how do you create a sacred relationship with your work in the world? Here are five things you can do right now to start. One, break the narrative that work sucks. If you want to be in right relationship, you can't have a combative approach to actually doing the thing. This way of experiencing work often comes from our inner child that is fighting against authority even if that authority is ourselves. It doesn't wanna to be told what to do, and it wants to fit in with the majority of people who connect through commiserating about work. And here's the thing, if you want to believe that work sucks and you want to live in the reality that work sucks, you can have that reality. It's the majority of the people's reality in the world. But if you wanna create a significant sacred relationship with your work, you have to truly let that go on every level. Two, instead, get conscious of your choice around what you do and how you serve the world. You did choose this, and if you want to re-choose something else, then do that. And then remember that you were a fully sovereign being that on some level really desired to use your life energy this way. So be clear and be in choice. The more you're aware of your choices in the world, the more that you take responsibility and allow yourself to feel empowered, like truly empowered to live this life, the more that you'll be joyful in the actions that you take. And that includes being in your work on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I know that in everybody's job, there are some tasks, there are some things that are kind of the grindy part, right? Even if you're doing your dream job, right? Maybe you're a ballet dancer in, like, in New York and you're like, this is the dream job, right? There's still that grindy part, right? Whether that is, you know, getting physical therapy or whether it is doing your payroll and you're leading the company that you want. For most of us, there is a grindy part. Don't let that grindy part stop you from remembering the choice you made to do this work and why. Why did you choose to do this? Connect back to that, especially when you're approaching the grindy parts so that you can infuse them with the same love and attention that you do the open, spacious, joyful parts. Three, animate and personify the energy field of your business and then get to know it. Be curious about how it wants to be how it grows organically, what causes it strain. Actually be attentive, notice what does this energy field feel like? What does it need on a daily basis? How can I be in relationship with it? What seems to make it grow the most? Even looking at, okay, when we go to the 80-20 rule, right, where 20% of our effort gives us about 80% of our results. So looking at what your business energetic field, what 20% is getting you the 80% results? That's your business energy field's love language. So the more you speak the love language of your business with your business and give it more of that, the more it will grow organically and also exponentially. And number four, create a reciprocal and loving relationship with this soul of your work or business. 
ask what it needs, and be in service of it. Make genuine requests of how you want support as well. Fall in love with the energy of it. Be grateful for all it provides you and honor and cherish it. Imagine that you've actually committed, that you are fully coming into a close, sacred relationship. And just like you would any relationship, you want to really be in service and you want to be clear around your own needs, right? You don't just serve and serve and serve endlessly, tirelessly, feeling like you're sacrificing yourself at every corner, right? There's some service, probably a lot of service, but then there are also requests. And in the request, you also have to be in the receiving, right? So you might say, make a deal with your business. Like I am so happy to be in so much service to all of these amazing people and I will do it joyfully and lovingly. And my request is that this supports my life, that the, there's income that supports my family, that I have enough sleep and enough room and space in my schedule for my life and my health and my family. You can also make requests. This is an okay way to relate to your business. And it's super important to do so. Number five is act and choose for yourself and your work in integrity with the essence of it and your being. So what I'm saying here is really to make sure that how money comes in and how money goes out is all in alignment. That how you treat your clients, your coworkers, your partners reflect the soul of your business. That the strength and container of your systems uphold the value you place in what you put in those systems. So for instance, if you have a need to organize your clients in some way or whatever work you need to organize. If you do this in a haphazard way, if you give them each a number and you depersonify them, you don't lovingly care and tend to them, then you're not honoring the soul of your business that said it was there to care for those people. So you want to make sure that everything is in alignment. If you have an organic clothing company, for instance, and you are all about creating a clothing line that is sustainable and good for the earth and good for the people, and then you work with a vendor who is cutting down the trees in the Amazon, right? Then you've lost alignment. And when you lose alignment, you really lose that connection to the soul of your business. The soul of your business wanted to create a better world. And then you went against that desire and chose a vendor that was maybe cheaper, that was maybe more convenient. Maybe it was your brother-in-law, whatever it was, right? You have to say no to those choices and be really clear about what the commitments are and make choices that really reflect that throughout your whole business. And I believe that there is such an amazing opportunity in our work to allow that relationship to transform us and to be a portal for healing and growth. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe and share it with your friends and check out my other videos for more peace and freedom in your life. Like this one on this amazing breathing technique for opening and expanding your energetic body. You're going to love it. We actually walk through it together. So definitely check that out. Do it right now. And this video, which is all about how to live a life of love, how to connect more to love and to create more of that in in your life. I am so grateful to be on this journey with you and I'm sending you so much love.